be preparing it, what was supposed to be a vegetarian um, spread, but last minute she shook it up. We're going to be using jerk chick, um, not chicken, jerk fish um, nachos. Um, an avocado cream sauce I'm very excited about and mango salsa and our musical guest is Chesco Emmanuel from Trinidad um, well known on the, the alt rock music scene classically trained guitarist and um, so I'm going to introduce everybody here in the panel below so starting from my left Chef Aquino Reed um, who's been a, a fan of the show for some time now so I'm really glad to have you in the hangout with us hi and then next to her is Chesco himself <laughs> then we have Jason Borden, who is, is Trini Gourmet's online community manager. So he's in front of the camera right now. And then hey. we have Ju hey. And then we have Julia Sanisak all the way in Colorado. She's no stranger to either me or the show or to any fans of Larry Fenillier's Caribbean cooking series. And you're cooking in, again with him this Sunday, right, Julia? I am, yes. So exactly. That's, that's going to be exciting. Studox still. I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> Then finally, Nicholas Jagdeo, one of my best friends here in Hello. Trinidad, always promising to come on, finally <laughs> did. <laughs> and now, yeah, finally, so glad to have you. And then finally here on my right, Shelly herself. Oh, did Ronnie just pop in with us? Ronnie's becoming a regular, and he was the musical guest on episode 7. As you all might remember, he was the um, panist. So, hi, Ronnie. Hi. Hey, and now Shelly, introduce yourself to the folks out there. Hi, how are you? I'm Shelly of Eat the Weight Love, and thank you so much, Serena, for having me. I appreciate it. We've been talking about doing the show for a minute, so I'm excited to be here. And um, as she said, I am a wellness coach, and I also um, am a foodie. I love food, um, and I use food as a um, symbol for the human experience and how we use or how our emotions influence the way we come to the table and then as a result how that influences the relationships we have in our lives. So today we're going to be making um, jerk fish. My family's from Jamaica so this is a kind of a tribute to that. Um, but I do love Mexican food. So we're going to make jerk fish nachos with um, mango salsa and a nice avocado cream. And you could use the vegan chicken as a substitute as well. So you can really work with this recipe and tweak it how you want. That sounds absolutely wonderful. So are you going to start by making the jerk sauce? Actually, I'm going to start. Well, first, I'm just going to put the fish in the oven. So I can start now. OK, yeah. Get ready. So Perfect. So, what temperature is the oven at? Walk us through it. Perfect. So can you see me, by the way? Because I see you full, but I don't see you. Mm -hmm. OK, perfect. Yes. So, um, so I'm going to start with the fish. And with the fish, I'm just going to, I'm not going to season it or anything. This is salmon. But um, you could use, I think, like swordfish or kingfish would go really nicely as well. But any fish that doesn't have a lot of bones would be perfect. Um, so for the fish, I'm not seasoning it because it's obviously going to take its flavor from the jerk sauce itself. So I just have it here in foil. I'm going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Oh, nice. Then and then we'll start on the sauce. And the sauce is really, really simple, actually. Um, so I kind of took the idea from um, uh, it was a it was a barbecue chicken pizza, and essentially what they were doing was um, making the like when you do pull barbecue uh, uh, and you make the sauce and then you put your meat in it and just sort of let it soak up the flavor. So I was taking that idea because um, typically with nacho, nachos, my experience has been like you have your meat. You have your veggies, your cheese, and then they throw the sauce on top of it. But I really like the idea of the sauce soaking in. So you can start with a can of diced tomatoes, but I um, just took Roma tomatoes, and this is about six Roma tomatoes. Can you see that, everyone? Yeah. Yes, wonderful. So it's about six Roma tomatoes, and I just chopped it up because it's going to come to the same end where you're going to reduce it and it's going to form its own sauce. All right, so seeds and everything go in here. So I'm just gonna heat up my pan, and so that's what that's what the base of your sauce is. And then um, as that begins to cook up, we're gonna add the jerk seasoning, add some thyme because thyme is an important ingredient in jerk. Um, and then also sazon, which is um, sort of a seasoning packet from Goya. Can you guys see that? Yes. 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 So um, is that an all-purpose seasoning? Pardon. Is that an all-purpose seasoning? That is. It's just a, it's a seasoning packet, and it tends to dye whatever you put in it red because it has. I want to say it's an anato. Um, 
Actually, yeah, it's probably an auto. Yeah, the auto that makes it um that makes it. So I'm gonna start and in this one because I'm using fish, I'm gonna use a shallot instead. But usually I use like a yellow onion. But um any onion base, so whatever you prefer, shallot, red onion, yellow onion, Spanish onion, whatever you prefer. So I'm just gonna heat it up and start the base of it with one shallot chopped, right? Wonderful. Now you can't see this because my kitchen is very small, so my camera is actually <laughs> right here on the stove, so I'm sharing eyes here. <laughs> that is city living. <laughs> that is city living. Welcome to Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, man. But while I'm sauteing the onions, are there any questions I can answer? Because Well, let me see. Let me check the event stream, see if anybody has any questions out there for us. <laughs> Well, I see two people are telling us hi. So, hi, Lauren, and hi, Randy. We, and again, if anybody has questions, you can just post them on the G Plus event page. I'm going to try and check in on YouTube as well, but, you know, I'm kind of focusing on the show. So, if anybody else in the audience wants to, um, in the Hangout audience, anyone at the bottom of the strip wants to monitor the event stream, feel free to do that as well. You can do that as well if you want, Jason. So what are you putting together now? So now I'm still just sauteing the onions. I'm just letting that sort of, and you're not sauteing it until it's completely um, soft and translucent because it's going to look up anyways in the sauce. Um, ideally, you would make the sauce um, ahead of time and then let, if you're going to put your veggie chicken or grilled chicken or your fish or whatever it is that you're going to put in there, you would let that sort of sit um, overnight so that the flavors really get a chance to melt. But obviously, this is a um, live internet cooking show. <laughs> so we're doing it all at once. And it really doesn't matter because the flavor is so intense that even if you prepared it right ahead of time, you still taste it. But just overnight, just imagine, you know, when you make something, you try yeah. the next night, the next day is like amazing. So that's, that's what you're going for. Well, I'm hearing that sizzle in the pan. And so I know when I hear that, something's good oh, is yeah, happening. Okay, it's happening. And I can smell it. It's so nice. So now I'm going to add the tomatoes. Ooh. And everything. Hearing that. Now, the tomatoes themselves probably take about, I'd say, about um, five to ten minutes to sort of soften. It's mm -hmm. almost like, I consider it like a massage. You know, when you get a massage in your, mm. body, in your body, the muscles start to relax. It's the same thing, you know, when you're cooking veggies. Like, that heat just eventually begins to take out the tension and they relax. So you just want to give it time to just sit there, meld, let everything get to know each other, and then come back to it when it's softer and more manageable. So while we're doing that, we'll go ahead and we'll start on the mango salsa, all right? Great. I like that analogy. Thank the you. massage. <laughs> so for the mango salsa, um, I had one mango. Now, the first time, I would say the first mango salsa I ever liked, Serena, and, and everyone else was when I was in Trinidad and I had mango chow. And it was like this eight-year-old oh, who wow. taught me how to make it. It was so good. It was so good. I was visiting my friend and his little brother was like, you want to make some mango chow? And I was like, sure, yes, please. So the best thing was he took me outside. We got the shot and Vinny from the lawn. We got the mango from the tree. <laughs> there were limes. And they already had a pepper sauce already made. I mean, it was such a beautiful experience. That was like the best mango salsa that I ever had. But um, And that was the first time that I really learned how to use green mango because I'm yes. so used to using it right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So on this particular salsa, you could use green mango. You could use ripe mango. It's going to give a different sort of vibe because obviously the riper it is, the sweeter it is. The yeah, and the green one is starchy. It's a star right, exactly. So this one... Because this is the United States, this is Brooklyn, and it's not quite, um, I don't know. We don't always get the best mangoes. This is between green and ripe. <laughs> that was part of it. Wonderful. So one mango I diced it. Let me bring up the, the thing so you can see it. Can you all see what's happening here? Oh, nice. So one mango diced, red onion finely diced as well, and then you could use tomato or you could use red pepper. It all depends on what you want. On the recipe, on the link, I used the tomato, but I wanted to um, switch it up, and I wanted the red pepper. And part of it was just for the crunch because the red, both the tomato and the red pepper to me add a sweetness, but the red pepper has a nice crunch that I thought would be kind of cool for this one, all right? 
So and you're just adding all of this into a bowl. And it makes a lot. You know, you're, once you start dicing all the vegetables, it makes quite a bit. And to this, you can use salt. I love adobo. It's the same. I mean, it's it's not salt. It's all-purpose seasoning. Um, for some, it can be saltier than salt. Uh, but I love adobo, so I'm going to add a sprinkle of adobo to this. And then I'm going to, I have Shannon Vinny here. So if anyone doesn't know oh, what you're doing, wonderful. Let me, let, me, let me show this lovely gem of an herb, grass, whatever it is. What is this? Is it an herb? Would it be considered an herb? It's an herb. It's yeah. An, yeah. It's also known as culandro or Chinese cilantro. So if you're looking for it, that's what it is. But essentially, it's I guess it's a part of the cilantro family, but the flavor is so much more intense. It's amazing. I remember the first time I had this, I don't think it was in Trinidad. I don't remember. Oh, it was um, in Panama. I was in Panama, and I had this, and I was like, this is amazing. The, the other cilantro looks like parsley is, to me is they've been cheating us out of flavor. This is where the flavor is. <laughs> I, I love shadow Benny slash culantro. I mean, I find the yeah. flavor, I prefer the flavor of it to cilantro. Exactly. And so I, if you can get that, that is the backbone of so many Trinidadian seasonings, so many of our dishes. It's exactly. really the only way to get the real authentic flavor. Isn't this, um, Serena, isn't this, I've never made green seasoning before, but I have had it, but isn't this sort of the um, foundation of green seasoning? That is the foundation of green seasoning. Yeah. Know, the idea of green seasoning without shadow benny is just wrong. Right. I don't know if, don't know if Ronnie and Nicholas and Chesco and Jason would back me up on that, but I think it's wrong. <laughs> it wrong. I'll back you up on it. Yeah. 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 Shelly, did you get that in Brooklyn? Did you find the... Oh, the yeah. Yeah, I, I found that in Brooklyn. This isn't hard to find because, you know, there's so many of us here anyway. Yeah. You just have to make sure you go to the right community. Okay. So if you go to, like, Williamsburg looking for this, you probably won't find no. it. But if you go to Flatbush, you're all right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about, now, at this point, and, and one of the things about when I cook and I do um, demonstrations, I am, I always say that a recipe is really a guideline. It's a suggestion. So yes. you have to really bring in your own taste buds and, and decide what's going to make sense for you and the people you're cooking for. So this is about, Shannon Benny has a very strong flavor. So if I was using cilantro, I would put a lot more. But this is about two tablespoons um, of Shannon Benny chopped up. So I'm going to add... Is that just a little bit so we can see how much? Oh. Wait, let me see, let me see. A little high? Yes. Nice. Yes. Good. And my tomatoes are reducing quite nicely, but they still have a way to go, so I'll wait on that. And what else do I want to add to this? Oh, my sprinkle of adobo, which I didn't do yet. And then pretty much it's done. If you want to add a little bit of pepper sauce into your mango sauce at this point, you can. Um, because we are, are going to have the heat of the jerk in the seasoning itself, Right. I don't think it's necessary, but some people just really like the punishment of heat. So if you want, that's you want Jason. Before. Jason's the heat man. He's the pepper man in this trip here. And then I'm sure you have a next bottle of pepper sauce sitting next to the prepared dish to put on top again. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the idea of balancing the heat with the coolness yeah, of the mangoes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes, with the sweet and the and the cool of the avocado cream. Mmm. So I'm gonna squeeze some lime, and the lime is um also um the sort of last part of the of the flavor profile of the whole thing. And this I kind of add bit by bit, so it's not too bitter, and I make sure that it tastes decent enough. Now don't ask me for measurements. You're just gonna pour a little bit. You know, mix, see how it goes, and keep it moving. And that's really going to bring out a little bit of acidity as well that's going exactly. to cut through the fish. Can you see what's going on here? Beautiful. Perfect. Anyone have any questions? It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. And it's also, want to play around with, oh, what's up? Nicholas, you were saying something? I said it makes me want some chow right now, some Trinidadian chow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that chow is the business. My goodness. Um, but you could also play with this and play with your fruit. So if you didn't 
um, want to use mango or even have access to mango, especially if you're here in the United States and you know how mango can be so tiny, then um, if it's summer, you could use peaches. But anything that has a similar flesh of, of a mango, so um, you could use that as a substitute as well and create a different salsa. That's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I if I get a, get a mango that isn't as sweet as I would like, I'll do a little chopped pineapple in it just to give sweet. Yes. So that That's way. what I was going to say. Pineapple. Yeah. And I also like cantaloupe. What's the other one? Cantaloupe? I like that. Yeah. That's a good idea, Julia. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Oh, I never thought about that. That does yeah. sound kind of amazing. It, it works nicely, and it's... You know, it's it's softer typically than a mango. A mango's kind of fibrous, you know. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, it 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 works and it makes a nice one because it breaks down a little bit then, and yeah. Yeah. I'm all about fruit salsa. Watermelon would be nice too, like any yeah. sort of melon. That would be kind of awesome. Yeah. Um, good deal. But while you're whipping that up, I think it's time for our first musical number. So I'm going to just shift the focus here to Chesco Emanuel. And Chesco, you want to tell us a few little things about yourself? I know that you have the music school, you, you train guitarists, and you've been on the alt scene for a very long time. Um, Trini Rockers out there will know Brothers Grimm as one of the well partners of the day. <laughs> Jason's doing his um, metal pride there. Um, so um, anything you want to say about yourself before you bust into green? I guess I could talk about the song. I mean, well, I yes, mean, talk about the song. Yeah, it's how long have you been playing? And, uh, two, uh, 26 years. Um, yeah. So, I started off, I really wanted to be a rock and roll star, but my mom en enrolled me in classical guitar school, which I never regretted. And um, so, this song, Green, it's really just about, um, you know, believing in your dreams. Yeah, and it needs to be louder. Dream. Yeah. Oh, louder? Okay. And. Um, yeah, th this song, Green, is about um, just believing in your dreams and. and um, fighting on no matter what anybody else says and um, it was written back in 1992 I think so a while ago you know so um, anyway here it goes Yeah. 
information and I don't understand why it is a word all the evidence to bleed for nothing to try in vain when everybody's heads in the drain. Everybody's clapping, but they're muted, <laughs> so we don't hear. Yeah. Oh, very excited! Yay! Yay! <laughs> that nice, was lovely, nice. Chesco. Lovely, Thank lovely. <laughs> and I, I do want to guide people to ChescoEmmanuel.com because then you can learn about what he teaches, and he has links to all his music, and yeah, you know sure. he's all hooked up with the interweb and the iTunes and the SoundCloud, so you can hear all his tracks, buy his EPs. It's really good stuff out there. <laughs> um, Shelly, uh, you, you seem to have a fan in Larry Finelli, eh? Um <laughs> He wants you to know that he's coming over for dinner, uh, <laughs> and that um, everything's looking good. You'll have to unmute so that we hear <laughs> you. <laughs> there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. <laughs> and Diane Cobb says, this is awesome. Live music while cooking. And Pfizer <laughs> is in the back there, Ronnie's wife, going, yay. So <laughs> people are enjoying the mix of food and music, and that's what Sweet Han is all about, sharing exactly. West Indian culture, Caribbean culture, and vibes. So where are we in the recipe right now, Shelly? So I just took the fish out because that's done. I mean, salmon doesn't take long to cook up. So, and again, I Oh, you're using that. salmon. Okay, nice. Yeah, I did salmon. Let's bake that in the okay. oven, um, 400 degrees for 20 minutes. And um, now my tomatoes are pretty much cooked down. Um, and so what I'm going to do, and this is a good way to cheat, if you don't want to wait the whole time for your tomatoes to sort of cook finely into the sauce, then once they're cooked enough, you just want to take about, um, well, you can take as much. You can, I'm going to take half because I want some of the chunks, but I'm adding in the thyme now. So let me show you my thyme leaves here. Ooh, I'm fresh adding, thyme? Yeah, my fresh thyme. I'm adding that in. At this, can you guys see? My Lovely. Time. Yeah, Love adding that. your time in. And then um, I'm going to take about, um, like I said, half of this particular mixture, put it in my food processor so I can make that into a serious, like more of a sauce paste, and then add that back into the pot. Mm. Nice. Yeah. And that's a way, like I said, if you're, if you're, if you're you know, crunch for time and you don't have time to send over the stove all day, just take out your food processor, your blender, if you don't have a food processor, and just put it in the blender once it's cooked up, and that's an easy way to have instant sauce. Mm -hmm. Shelly, are you using the whole stem and, and everything, or are you peeling the leaves off? No, oh, I'm literally taking my finger, let me see, taking my finger like so, and then I'm taking, so all I have are the leaves, like, where are we? So I have the leaves left, yep. Nice. Okay, got that. Got it? Yep. Got it. Perfect. Now 
just popped out there for a sec. <laughs> If you wanted the entire sauce smooth, then you would put the whole thing in there. But I, I took about two thirds of it, and then I left a third so I can have some of the chunks as well for the nachos. Wonderful. Perfect. No. Now, are you leaving it still a little bit chunky, or do you want it smooth? No, this particular, can you see that? That's going to be mm. smooth. And then I have, I left about a third of the entire mixture in the pot for some chunks. But if you, that's what I was saying, is I like the idea of having some chunks, especially since it's nachos. You want to bite down on something. But if, for some people, you know, um, if they want, they could just do the entire thing without having any chunks in there. And now that I have it broken down, I'm going to add the seasoning. Now, the reason why I didn't add the jerk or um, any of the uh, sazon is, or even salt if you're using salt, is because when you blend it, like the way I just did, or you put it in the food processor, it really intensifies the seasoning because you're breaking that down too. So it's you know you at that point is you run the risk of it being over seasoned. So it's a good idea to just get it finally how you want it, consistency-wise, and then start to add your seasoning. That's a good tip. Yeah. And let me show you how it looks now. Oh, wow. Everyone see? That looks really gorgeous. Thank you, ma'am. Nice. I'm excited, too. <laughs> All right, so now for my jerk. Instead of dry jerk seasoning, I like to use a paste. I think it blends That's what my in mother really uses. And yeah, you both have Jamaican I, mothers, so. <laughs> exactly. So, so she knows. Walkers. Walkers. Walkers would my favorite one. Um, if you want to be adventurous, you could make your own. I, I'm not that woman. <laughs> but it's you time consuming. Yes. Yeah, it's very time consuming. But it is worth the effort. Mm -hmm. But it's time consuming for sure. Now, again, you know, I don't give measurements. If you like heat, be generous with your jerk. If you don't like too much heat, but you like the flavor, then you could start with even as small as a teaspoon. I don't think that's enough, but you could start with as small as a teaspoon. Start tablespoon. Start with a tablespoon. <laughs> I, I would say, but for those people who are not so sure, <laughs> I'm starting with a tablespoon for this particular recipe, though. So, yeah, a tablespoon I know is good. And I'm also going to add some crushed garlic. So this is, I'm not crushing it myself. This is like really like the, the garlic paste. And you can find, I have this from Trader Joe's, but if you go to any, um, I know a lot of Indian markets as well will sell them. So this is, I'm only adding about a teaspoon of the garlic paste into the sauce. How's everyone doing? Good, getting hungry. <laughs> Good. Oh my God, it smells so nice. I love it when it mixes in. It's, and everything starts to blossom, bloom. It smells so nice. And you can smell all, like the pimiento, like you can smell everything that goes into the jerk. It's so fragrant. My God. Such a good thing. It's torture not having smell vision. I wish I could. <laughs> Girl, give, give Google like, give Google 10 more years. That'll be in effect. <laughs> That'll be in effect. They'll figure out a way to make that happen. All right. And then last, I'm just going to add some of my sazon. Now, I'm not going to add this entire packet. The entire packet of sazon is, I don't know what the size is, but um, it comes in a box like this. I'm trying to see if it says how big the, pack the packet is. It comes in a box like this, and then there's individual packets that you can tear off. Usually when I'm cooking, I only use a half, um, but that's also because I'm usually not cooking for a large amount of people. If you're cooking for a family and you have like, you know, six, seven people, then probably, and you're making a big pot of food, then you could probably use the whole packet. But I would just sort of, you know, as you go along, figure out what you need. Yeah, taste and test. Yeah, because sazon is very, very powerful. And it's adding that beautiful red color that I was saying. It makes the uh, the sauce even more red. I mean, the tomatoes obviously are red, but it adds that sort of nice, like I like to call, you know, tomato sauce jar red. 
Yes, yes. And we actually sell bottles of um, just the oil or sometimes water that is intensified with the anato yes. in local markets. It's very good for mixed rice as well. Oh, wow. Here it is. So I'm going to give it a try first. Make sure I approve. That's important. Mmm. Oh my God, it's perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. I love it. And then at this point, now, um, at this point, you can add in your veggie chicken, your um, your fish, or if you're using, you know, whatever it is that you're using, you can add that in. And if you don't eat meat, I think shiitake mushrooms would make a great accompaniment to this. So add, add your meat. So chop up some shiitake mushrooms and then add that into the sauce once that serves your meat as well. So you could really play around if you wanted to use fresh veggies like squash and zucchini and this sort of thing. But you can add all that in at this point. Wonderful. So I'm just going to add the, um, the, the fish in, um, Serena. I don't know if you... Wanna... Yeah, we can do another song. Um, yeah. And then you're going to do your avocado cream sauce afterwards? Yes, exactly. Oh, can't nice. wait for that. <laughs> can't wait for that. Oh, my God. I know. I'm really looking forward. So we have another little number here from Chesco, and it's called Bittersweet. Um, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> what? <laughs> And um, I'm a big fan of instrumental guitar work. I mean, Jesse Cook, I, I love his stuff. And, you know, there's some other guitarists that I have. Um, so, you know, when I heard the instrumental tracks in um, Chesco's discography, I was like, oh, wow, wonderful. So I had to have him play one on the show. So here's Bittersweet. Everybody mute. I, I must Sorry? say, nobody's ever asked me to play an instrumental before. So I, I was quite um, honored. <laughs> oh, well. So mute away and play. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Jessica, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> You're making a man blush now. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan of instrumental music myself. Oh, that was really good. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Chescoemmanuel.com. <laughs> so how are we how are we looking? How are things looking, Shelly, in the kitchen? Oh, you're still muted, sweetie. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So here we have the salmon and the jerk sauce. Can you see that now? Oh, that looks lovely. Yummy. Yeah. Mm. So, um, and that was about, I'm trying to think how much salmon that was. You know, I didn't even measure it. I think it was like a pound or so. So, yeah. But, um, so here I just have one avocado. And again, oh. as you know, picking up. Can, can you see me? I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so here I just have an avocado here. I just cubed it because it makes huh? it easier. Um, oh, there we go. Um, I just cubed it because it makes it easier to mash. And so you just want to start the process of just mashing it a bit um, with a fork or a masher or whatever. And it's almost like you're making guacamole, but you're not. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, very much like you're making guacamole. And how I came up with this, this particular avocado cream, was I love guacamole and I love sour cream. And I was trying to find a way to, um, I don't know, minimize having to use everything and just create where I could have the effect of both without having both, especially if I didn't have time to make guacamole, um, right. if I didn't have sour cream on hand, et cetera, et cetera. So here I have a nice mash. And you can make it smoother. Ooh. And um, oh, that looks it's a lot easier if you add lime while you're mashing it, while you're mashing it to get it smooth. Let me add some in here. And the lime also gives a nice flavor, of course, in addition to making it easier to mash and soften. Soy or coconut yogurt, plain, okay. not flavored, plain. Okay. Um, and then you can try that and see if that works. If not, I would also recommend um, mixing this, the avocado, and coconut cream. So not coconut milk, but coconut cream. You're familiar with that? I get it. And not the sweet one. Um, if you take a, a can of coconut milk, put it in the refrigerator, the fat and the water will separate. Exactly. So take off with that, and then I will put that in a blender with some lime juice with this, and that Ooh. might work. Okay. It's very important that you get coconut cream and not cream of coconut, though, because uh, um, it might, yeah, cream of coconut you'll find in the liquor aisle. It's very sweet. I don't think that's <laughs> what Shelly's looking for. So right. we're looking for unsweetened coconut cream or, okay. yeah, exactly. yeah, don't get the cream Thank of coconut. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just picturing somebody seeing cream of coconut and going, this must be it, and adding it to your avocado sauce and going, what happened? <laughs> Definitely grab a can of coconut milk, high fat, not low fat, because if you get low fat, then you won't get the cream. But in the refrigerator, minimum four hours or overnight, it'll separate, take off the cream, and that's what I'm talking about. Okay. I also added some adobo to my avocado, so at this point... You're really just seasoning your avocado. You could use salt or adobo, whichever you prefer, lime juice. You're just seasoning it to taste. And then once you have it to taste, you're going to add in your Greek yogurt. So here is our Greek yogurt here. Let's see. Yum. So I'm going to give it a taste. Mm. I could just eat it like this. Oh, my God, it's so good. <laughs> Love it. 
Yeah. Well, while you're doing that, why don't you touch a little bit on the whole eat what you love concept because I really wanted you to share a little bit about, you know, your whole practice and uh, some of the insights you've gained along the way about food and our bodies and Absolutely. why diets don't work. So, Thank yeah. You. So yeah. Eat What You Love came about because um, a lot of the, so I offer what I call belly breakthroughs to my clients. And a belly breakthrough is essentially, you know, when you have that aha moment, you know, when you're like, oh, I get it now. That was my issue all the time. So, um, like I said, I'm not necessarily a chef. I'm a foodie with a background in psychology. So, um, I do a lot of wellness coaching with my clients and, and helping them. A lot of clients come to me around wanting to lose weight, wanting to better their relationship with food. And like so many of us, myself included, um, we're brought up with this idea that if we just eat a certain diet or if we just like run around the block 5,000 times, we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it the deal. Usually just isn't that simple. It usually is not as simple. If it was as simple about, if it was as simple as eating a certain diet or exercising a certain way, um, then we'd all be able to do it. But a lot of us have emotional and spiritual blocks to um, achieving our own wellness and, and, and um, achieving our best health. And so, you know, if you are an emotional eater and you struggle with, unresolved conflict and food is the way that you try to soothe yourself, um, then it can be a challenge. You understand? So um, a lot of clients would ask me, well, Shelly, what should I eat? What should I eat? And the truth is there are so many diets. You could be vegan, vegetarian, um, follow whatever lifestyle you want, but that itself is not necessarily the answer to deep-seated problems that you have around food and around weight loss and around trying to get your health in order. So. Um, I came with this with this acronym, Eat What You Love. And so when I first say it, people kind of freak out. They're like, I can't eat what I love. I, I love chocolate and I love Cheetos and Oreos, right? So it's like, no, 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 not that type of eat what you love. That's like foods you crave. That's different. So eat what you love. L stands for life, which this dish that we're making actually is a great eat what you love dish. So it stands for life. And life is the idea that food itself is um, connected to the earth. It's a source of energy. It's connected to the same thing that created all of us, right? So it, it has a spiritual um, um, energy inside of it. And if you're eating foods that are alive, then you're going to feel that life energy as well. So um, if you're a raw food vegan, then you know what I'm talking about. If you ever had raw food or vegan food, then you know what I'm talking about because it's minimally processed. It's not heated above a certain temperature. Um, and it uses fresh ingredients from the earth, so fruits. Vegetables, nuts, seeds, our mango salsa is a perfect example of foods that are life. I mean, look at it. It's just teeming with life. You can see the color, and, you know, it hasn't been outside of being chopped. It hasn't been processed or, or broken down in any other way. And then the O of Eat What You Love stands for obedience. So we spend so much time trying to be obedient to a diet that um, we forget that food needs to be obedient to us. So when food enters your body, if it makes you cough or sneeze or swell or, you know, have congestion or whatever, it's not obedient to you and you shouldn't be eating it. So you have to get it off your list. So you should really take in foods that when they go into your body, they serve you because that's what it's there to do. And then V stands for vibes. Eat what you love, vibes. And you can see all of this in detail, as a matter of fact, at eatrelatelove.com. That's my website. Please give it a visit. Um, I actually have every single acronym spelled out with the recipe accompanying it. Um, so V stands for vibes, and vibes is about eating with all of your senses. So your sense of sight, your, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense of touch, but also your sixth sense, which is your intuition, which is why when I talk about cooking intuitively versus simply following a recipe. So there's the idea of really being able to think and communicate with your vibe, create a almost like a spiritual language, a communion between you and your food. And so, um, 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 we use that a lot too when we're grocery shopping. Like when you're choosing produce, if you if you're choosing a banana, you're not going to pick the one that has bruises and unless you're making maybe banana bread, right? But you're going to pick the one that looks the most appealing. So what vibes with you? And everyone has a different connection to food, so it's important to like hone in in yourself and figure out what that is. And then E, of course, is food is energy. Um, and we all learned that in health class. Like we know, okay, yeah, the food is its energy. So. You know, you can have Thanksgiving dinner and get the itis, or you can have like a fresh green salad and like have energy to go, you know, I don't know, run around a block 5,000 times if that's what you really want to do. 
So, um, but food itself, um, view yourself as, as, a, as a creator. You have the power to give the energy that you want into food. So this is the difference when you taste your grandmother's cooking and you feel love in it. That's the type of energy that you have the ability to put into your food. And so it's important that when you're cooking your food, and if you didn't cook it, if you're eating from someone else or from a restaurant or whatever, that you put in the energy you want into your food. And we call this often prayer when we pray over our food. But there's a power in the words that we speak over our food, the same way we speak words over our life, because it really does add, in a sense, nutritional value into what you're eating. So that's eat what you love. And that's really about creating... Um, I'm sorry, I got, I saw my name in the chat room and I got confused. That's really, <laughs> that's really how you begin to create a relationship with food that serves not only your body and your health, but really your best life. So that's part of the work that I do with um, helping people connect their emotions with food and ultimately with their greater life so they can be well fed. Well, that, that's, that's a great synopsis. I don't think you could have um, summed it up any better than that. <laughs> So we have six minutes. Okay, How perfect. are we doing? <laughs> now what we're going to do is, in these last six minutes, so I have my tortilla. Can you see them here? My mm -hmm. tortilla is here. Now, if you don't want to use tortillas, um, I actually, one of the things I did when I first made this recipe is I use yuca chips, plantain chips, sweet potato chips, and tortillas mixed. It was so good. Just mix all of it together. Oh, my goodness. And then... Um, it's almost like you have this sort of, you know, flavor of like all these different Caribbean roots and you have the sweet and the sweet potato. It was amazing. And so you just want to add your, your, your whatever jerk, whatever you're jerking on top of the chips. And then you want to add your cheese. Put that in the broiler. And then when you're done and you finish it, then you top it with your, um, your mango salsa as well as your avocado cream. And you can see what it looks mm. like. Right? See? Mm. So, wow. Similar to guacamole, yeah, and if you wanted something more runny, if you wanted something more runny that you could sort of drizzle, then you could take the um, the mixture of the avocado, the lime, uh, the, the the salt, and the um, Greek yogurt, put it in the blender, and then you can add a little bit of broth into the blender, and that would give it that sort of where you could just drizzle it, sort of runny. So that depends on you and the texture you prefer. Just grab it. Top pastry, add some honey, some diced apples or diced peaches, wrap the puff pastry around it, put it in the oven at like 400 degrees and bake it for uh, whatever long it takes for the puff pastry. It's about 15 minutes and you can slice it and you have this nice buttery uh, pastry with the cheese and the, and the fruit and the, oh, I know, I know, feed you, right? <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're just cool. For real, huh? <laughs> I'm just letting the cheese melt really quickly. So, I mean, at this point, you're really done. So, when you're ready to serve it, I'm just letting the cheese melt. So, I put it back in the under the broiler so the cheese can melt. And then you put your topping on, and voila, you're done. I know you guys want to see the finished product. So, I'm trying to yes, hurry, I up. Do. hurry up within the time. While it's melting, does um is it Chesco, right? Yes. Chesco, you have any last words you want to share with us? While the cheese is melting. 
any last words? Um, uh, <laughs> well, uh, this is this <laughs> you put me on the spot. Uh, this is my first time ever playing on on, on something like this, and it was quite interesting. And um, I, I had a ball. Um, thanks for having me, Serena. So I, glad you. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, what, what you said, Shelley. It made a lot of sense. It's kind of hard to hear him, Serena. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah. He says you're making a lot of sense. He loved what you had to say oh, about thanks. what yeah, you love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. No problem, no problem. And uh, you guys are a great audience. <laughs> you know, so. Good job. I, I am. I am. I'm mm -hmm. really hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just dying with anticipation for this final reveal. I mean, it's all been building up to this. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, I hope it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll. Yes, I've. <laughs> and let's see. Can mm. you all see this? Oh, oh wow. Mm. Oh, my. Thank you. Brilliant. It was my yeah. honor to hang out with you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Open up, open up. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if only that worked. Thank you so much, Shelly. Thank well, you so much. Thank you. Time, all right? mm -hmm. We'll have it live. <laughs> yes. So take Great. pictures of everything yeah. and upload. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing of with course. us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you, Ikina. Thank you, Chesco. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. And to right. Julia, who had to rush out to a meeting. I think she probably even rushed out a little late because she was loving what you were doing so much there, Shelly. And thank you to everyone out there who tuned in for another episode of Sweet Anne. I'll be back next week with um, a Trinidadian jazz singer who's based in Osaka, Japan. And I went to school with her, actually. She's one of my classmates, um, Alicia Saldena. And I'm going to be making another round of dishes in the kitchen. I'll be back in the kitchen next week. Um, and look for a special surprise involving plantain. So if that's mm. something that you love. You want to be back here. Same time, same day, 7 p.m. Eastern, Sweet Han, Caribbean Cooking with Serena. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.